Welcome back to another video for Neo 2. I'm just going to be showing you my build here that I'm using um, as I'm soaring. So I've just finished off soaring and I'm ready to head over to Shadow now. So this is very early on in the game. Um, for those of you who are struggling, I find this build to be very effective. Uh, I know some people are saying that Omnio Omnio Ninjutsu is not that, all that great. Uh, I beg to differ, and I'll walk you through how it works. So as you can see, I've got four stats. I've got Dexterity and Magic uh, maxed out. I'm just dumping all of my points in there. If I wanted to use a weapon other than Kusarigama, which is the Dexterity weapon, or the Switchglaive, which is the Magic weapon, then I could take points out of Dexterity and Magic as long as I keep them up at 30 each. At this point, I'll have my maximum capacity for Jutsu for both Ninjutsu and Onmyo. So as long as those are 30, that's okay. So I could start dumping points into something else to use a different weapon, but I'm pretty happy with uh, Kusarigama and Switchglaive. Um, so I'm going to stick with just pumping those two stats up for the entire playthrough. Um, for gear, uh, as you can see, I'm not min-maxing at all. Uh, you know, I've got this rotten rope cutter. I could have a higher level weapon at this point, but this is good enough. Um, that gives me the imbue corruption. I'm running the seething dragon for corruption on my switchglaive. Both of those are fine. Uh, I haven't really bothered reforging them. Uh, on Borehole Bow, uh, I'm using this one to do damage and to get life back if I want to. Um, for this one, this is the one that I typically run with because it's got the uh, increased damage um, bonus for having light equipment. And I'm actually running very light equipment right now. So I've got the Shinobi uh, set is the one that I'm running, and the reason for that is that it increases Ninjutsu power. Unfortunately, there's no Onmyo equivalent yet that I've been able to get, so I figured I'd max out Ninjutsu power to do the most damage with my Ninjutsu abilities, and not just Shuriken and Kunai, but also the elemental uh, attacks that you get, which can be very, very devastating. Um, and then uh, other than that, like if I can get untouched Onmyo or Ninjutsu, uh, as a roll easily um, and check the crafting video for how to temper things to get the effects that you want. Um, I'm not really bothering to try and get untouched Onmyo and Ninjutsu on, on every piece. So you can do that if you want. It's not really necessary. Even if you don't do it, you can still be very effective. Uh, otherwise, if I'm not getting those effects, I'm looking for easy effects that will kind of help out. So reduce projectile damage taken, increase defense, uh, key recovery for Amrita Gage, things like that. Um, those are all good effects, and they were readily available when I just did tempering once on, on each one so that I didn't kind of just got rid of the useless effects on my gear. Um, but if you can get untouched Omeo and Ninjutsu on each piece, awesome. I'm not going to spend the time to do it. This build is effective even without it. So let's look at the abilities that I keep slotted. Um, obviously, you want to have Elixir. Uh, I also run two each of Sloth, Devigorate, Weakness. And when I first start out the fight, I'll toss on a Sloth, I'll toss on a Devigorate, and I'll toss on a Weakness. Um, if those drop during the fight, then I just recast. Before I go into the fight, I buff myself one time, so... I'll toss up uh, Steel, Talisman, Platus, Extraction, and Barrier, and I only use those for boss fights. Um, so just before I go into the boss room, I'll buff that along with my Kusarigama skill. I'm also running almost max. I'm just one uh, capacity, Onmyo Magic capacity short of being able to use all four of the Fire Shot. So I do three Fire Shot, uh, four Water Shot, four Lightning Shot, uh, and then for the two, um, what I'm running are six, so I'm, I'm slotting in the maximum amount for Flaming Heron, uh, Yoro Yoroka Water Feathers, and Daijin Feathers. Uh, and I'm also keeping a couple of call traps just in case of an emergency. If something's pressuring me too much, can drop those and kind of back off and outrun them. Um, but those are the active abilities that I run. Um, in terms of skills, for Shifting, I've gone ahead and gotten um, maximum for the Yokai Within and Dark Within to reduce the uh, key penalty uh, in Yokai Realms and Dark Realms. 
Um, this one just was sort of on the pathway to get those two. Uh, I've extended the dur duration of Yokai Shift to 15%. I'm working on Dark Discipline to get that up to 3 next, so Yokai Shift will last longer in Dark Realm as well. Uh, I have Dark Acumen, which increases the drop, drop rate of items, but that was just necessary as a prerequisite to get Dark Discipline. I've come down here and gotten spine Special Finesse, so that if I do a Burst Counter, I'll get, uh, I believe, 40% of my key back. That also gave me uh, Demonic Dexterity, so that uh, when I'm dodging in Yokai Shift, it costs less. So I tend to dodge more than anything. Um, and then the other ability that I've gotten over here is increasing key recovery speed whenever I successfully perform a burst counter. Now, from here, what I'm going to want to pick up after I max out Dark Discipline is I'm going to want to pick up Yokai Shift to take less damage. Um, and then I'm going to try and get each of the Arcana. So Arcana of Water, uh, Arcana of Fire, and Arcana of Lightning. So I have Lightning right now. But I'm going to want to uh, get all of those as well as the Arcana of Power over here eventually um, so that I can equip those to skills. And I'll show you how you equip those to skills in a little bit. For Omeo Magic, uh, I wanted to get basically the key skills as you're going through are to get Sloth Talisman, your Divigorate, and your Weakness. So get the abilities that you need to get those. Um, and then I've also worked all my way down here to max out my own Mio Magic capacity. So that's at, at five, an additional five. In the process, I also picked up Lightning Shot, um, which I'm using quite regularly. And I can use other abilities if I want to, but those ones are pretty useful. Um, for buffs, I've come over and gotten Steel Talisman. So I respect to get Steel Talisman. Platus and Extraction um, are the key buffs that I'm using along with Barrier Talisman. So those are the four buffs. And those are the, the abilities you need along with each of the shots. So you have Fire Shot here, Water Shot here, and Lightning Shot here. And those are the abilities you're going to want to go for as quickly as possible. Um, and from here on, I'm just basically going to stick with these abilities and I'm going to increase them to maximum so that I can slot as many jutsu as possible. So I'm just going to be increasing these to reduce the cost of the buffs and whatnot. Um, so I'll max out Steel Talisman, Extraction, Pladius, uh, Sloth, Divigorate, and Weakness. For Samurai skills, you want to make sure you pick up the three of the key pulse, purify, and running water for heaven, earth, and man. Um, and you also want to make sure you pick up flux and flux two. Uh, I'm not actually using flash attack, but I'll probably pick that up pretty soon so that I can swap between Kusariyama and Switchglaive. Um, but not hugely important. It is nice to have that extra attack when you do a, a weapon swap on key pulse. Um, and then I've also come over here and started getting life. So I've sunk a couple of extra points in abilities that I don't particularly need and, and won't use. So like this Hands of Death, I won't use. And Composure, I won't use. Um, but that gives me an additional 80 life at this point. And for Ninja, um, the key abilities that you're going to want to get here uh, when you first start out, get Sneak Attack catwalking and sneak thief and i'll show you just how useful those are we'll do a little bit of gameplay in a minute and i'll show you why i love those skills but i've gone ahead and maxed out sneak thief to bring its cost down um, i've also maxed out the shadow arts uh, each of the shadow arts to bring their cost down as well so i can keep those slotted so i i only really slot catwalking sneak thief those three and caltrops and I'm increasing the um, call traps right now. I also have gone all the way up to Ninja Tool Mastery 2 to get an extra 5 capacity to get let me slot as many ninjutsu as I possibly can. And then I'm only really using Kusarigama actively, so I'll only touch on that one. Um, you'll want to look for similar Switchglaive if you start using that. I might actually start playing around with Switchglaive a little bit more just to get some points in it. Um, but for um, Kusarigama, 
the key skills that you're going to want to get early on are Summer Twilight. So you're going to want to get Reaper on the way to getting Summer Twilight. This buff is, is fantastic, particularly if you're using the Barrier Talisman because the key damage, extra key damage you receive isn't really an impediment at that point because you recover your key really quickly with the Barrier Talisman. So this just gives you an on-command uh, attack strength increase whenever you want it. And it's a pretty good increase in damage. So uh, I always have that one as an early skill. Um, I also get Blade Spin because Blade Spin is usable in every stance and it's a um, square R1 attack and it's actually pretty good. You can see that it'll hit stuff around you to the sides as well as hitting the thing in front of you multiple times. Uh, the other skill that I really want is Renegade Dragon, but I don't have the mission yet that'll let me get that. So until I get that, I'm just using other abilities um, for Square R2. Um, so for now, that is Reaper, right? I've also come down here because I had the extra points and gotten uh, Relentless 1 and Relentless 2, um, which are kind of handy. Um, Whirlwind Kick you pick up on the way. I don't use it a whole lot because I'm using uh, Blade Spin. Full Moon Kata um, and Full Moon Kata 2 will let you increase your damage um, when your health is full, as long as you're using a Kusarigama, so I picked those up. Um, chain pull is also kind of handy uh, if I'm running low stance and something is far away, but really um, I'm doing the hold R2 command in high stance, so I typically run high stance to do more damage, and I use that one which has basically the same effect as um, chain pull, but I needed to get chain pull in order to get relentless too. For the uh, mid stance skills, uh, I've got waterfall um, and shadow strike so I'm really working on getting shadow strike to increase the damage I do um, when I'm behind an enemy and I wanted to pick up masterful guard too just so that if I am in mid stance I can block at a good time and that'll cause it to deflect and, and knock them back um, and I've also picked up whirlwind because why not it's on the way to renegade dragon so if I am in mid stance I can use that one and it's a pretty good skill actually because it hits basically everything around you. And that's it for the skill builds um, at this point. Um, when you're assigning skills, one thing that people are asking a lot of questions on is how do you assign those abilities in the yokai um, shifting tree? So how do I assign, for example, this arcana of lightning? Well, the way that you do that is you go into your skill customization and then you'll see um, I've got these little circles that are colored or blank um, next to these abilities. So for example, if I wanted to assign lightning to Reaper, then I can do it here, right? So I just hit square, I go into the skill, and that'll let me choose what I can assign. Now you can only assign one skill, one effect to one skill. Right, so if I assign our kind of lightning here to Reaper, I can't actually assign it here to Reaper as well, right? I have to choose whether I use it in high stance, medium stance, or low stance. So don't just assume because you've got it on Reaper up here that it applies to all your Reapers. It's not. Each stance's attacks are unique. Um, so you're going to have to choose, pick and choose which ones you want to assign to which skills. Uh, don't worry about these ones right now. Um, I'm just messing around. It's not a big deal to the build. And my effect, my, my active skills are, are not all that important at this point. Um, the important thing are the Onmyo and the Ninjutsu. So I'm going to show you really quickly, let's see, where is it? Hot-Blooded Howl. So this one is a quick mission if you've got this build. So I just want to show you kind of how it plays if you're running in, running through this. So um, for this one, if you haven't done it yet, Mataza has been looking for a way to get back into Lord no Nobunaga's good graces, and you have to help him out. So we'll go in and do that.
Hey, Mud. Sorry I didn't respond there for a while. I was talking through things. But yeah, this is a uh, Ninjutsu Onmyo build. Although autocorrect has uh, gotten that wrong for the spelling. Onmyo. There we go. All right, so would you come in here, talk to this guy? And we're just going to rush basically right to the next shrine without necessarily having to kill anything. So I could mess with fighting those guys, or I could rely on my jutsu. Um, oh, I didn't actually show you which I, what I've readied for jutsu yet, did I? So in readying jutsu... Like I said, I've got call traps, just two of those. Catwalking, four. Sneak Thief, uh, five. And then each of the Shadow Arts. And for this one, I've got Fire Shot, Water Shot, Lightning Shot, Divigorate, Talisman, two each for Divigorate, Weakness, and Sloth. So I can recast one each for Barrier, Seal, uh, Platus, and Extraction. And that's pretty much it. That's all you've got capacity for at this point if you're running this build. But you don't really need to keep um, Catwalking or Sneak Thief uh, slotted. You can use both of those, and that makes you totally undetectable to the enemies. Right? Unless you trigger a mandatory effect, they're not even going to notice you. So you can kind of just run right by them. And I'm going to cruise on up, you know, picking up loot along the way as I'm able. And I'm going to get all the way up to where the shrine is. Now, in order for me to be able to access the shrine in this area, I'm going to need to be able to um, kill that rock right there. Or, no, I guess it is accessible, so we've got it. Um, let's see if the effect is wearing off. I could break that rock. Let me use the shrine really quick, and I'll break that, break that rock. And I'll show you really fast. Let's say this is a tough enemy. I don't need to buff, but I will anyway. Let's say he's harder than he actually is. Oh, here, kill that while I'm at it. Let's say I want to kill that guy and he's really tough. I just do Sloth, Divigorate. You can see he's hardly hitting me for any damage at all now. And if I want to, I can go ahead and do um, two shots of water, two shots of lightning. That will give him discord, and he'll die right away. Right, so you can pretty much take out and discord and confuse enemies whenever you want, um, and you're very, very effective. But I don't need to fight anything, because I've got uh, Sneak Thief and Catwalking. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ignore him. It says I need, he needs my help, but I don't want to deal with any of these guys, right? I'm just going to cruise on through... Sneak by that guy... Right, and everything is, is pretty much ignoring me. You get to here, um, and then there's a shortcut all the way back up. So this is really the only shortcut in this board. You don't want to get too close. If you touch them, then they'll hit you. But this lets me open up this shortcut all the way back up uh, by the first and second shrine. Right, so this is that big shrine in the beginning. So if I have to run through again for whatever reason, I've now opened up the shortest path back all the way to the boss. Make 
make sure I don't let him spot me. And then let's go help our friend. So it looks like we've got two things going on here. Um, just to note, your weapon is still fairly effective. Uh, he is just bound and determined to draw as much aggro as possible. So I could finish this guy, but I'm just being a little bit careful. Um, just a couple of shots should finish him off. There you go. So even though he's a big tough dude, uh, our own Mio was able to take him out fairly easily. Uh, looks like this guy is still struggling here. So how about I just use some Omnio from up here. And they're all dead. Alright. Oh no, we've got another guy up there. Who's cast fire on us. Still can use your bow and whatnot if you want. Oops, it's going to hit me. Better heal up. Ah, he's going to kill me. <laughs> that would have been embarrassing. There we go. All right, I'll try and stop fumbling. Jeez. Stop hitting me. There we go. I'm usually not that bad on the aim. I'm just recording live. Shout out to you, uh, Gorgo Podarus. Thank you. For the support. Um, so what am I doing? Alright, so we're going to go back up now that we've got him and we can skip all of the rest of the content uh, and basically just drag him out with us. Oh, I forgot to talk to him. Shoot. Oh well. Alright, enough messing around with these guys. And no, you cannot go down there and get the other guy. Alright, so. He'll speak to you. And now he follows you, and he'll follow you back up to the shrine. So from the shrine, uh, I'm going to just clear really quickly um, that effect there. Actually, nah, skip it. So I could avoid the fight with that guy by clearing out this yokai realm here. And obviously this guy is pretty tough until I used ninjutsu on him. There we go. Yokai Realm cleared. Not even something that I needed to worry about. Now that that's clear, I should be able to get him down to the boss without too much hassle. So I can use my Sneak Thief and my Cat Walking. And he should basically just chase me to where I'm going to go. This is even easier if you don't have to escort somebody, right? Like... He might aggro stuff along the way. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that Neo 2 is easier. I'm just showing a build video right now. So, um, you know, it's depends on the fight and it depends on the build 
earlier on, I would say Neo 2 is actually more challenging because you have this this new um, tactic called uh, Yokai Burst, which is basically like an on it's it's kind of like a parry or an interrupt uh, depending on what Guardian Spirit you're using. So you can see, just for clear and trash, all I'm doing is just self-buffing with my uh, my kunai um, attack buff. That lets me take out those pretty quickly. Get my loot. There we go. Now, I might as well get a Benevolent Guardian here. Um, for this boss fight, uh, I think you get like two adds and then the boss itself. So I'm going to try and just use Onmyo Magic to take everything out. One down, two down. I'll stack Discord. And boss is dead. There we go. And that is the end of the mission. So as you can see, uh, Onmyo Ninjutsu can be fairly powerful and effective for clearing missions and leveling and boss fights, you name it. Um, if anything, you can just sort of speed run through the missions as long as you know where the um, ambushes are so that you can avoid them. So in my opinion, I really think this is a good way to play through because it gets you used to using those techniques. Um, as you're as you're working your way through the content and getting familiar with what Onmyo can and cannot do and what ninjutsu can and cannot do will help you um, in new game plus and beyond because there are just some fights that without uh, being able to put discord or confusion on an enemy uh, it becomes really challenging to defeat them so I uh, hope you guys like this video and the build. I will see you back for some more Kodama and boss fights later on in the third region. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you back for the next episode.